Well, good morning. How are you, Victory? I am pumped. I want to take just a minute. Praise team, you left on me. Jump back up real quick. If you don't mind, just the, the come on, Chris, you guys, come back up. I'm going to take a minute. You know, last week, um, we're in the middle of summer revival, and last week I was here, and we about burnt the house down because revival is represented by fire pastor. I'm the one that burnt them holes in the ground last week. And so, you know, what's crazy is we were, we were praying for fire, and I got to be honest with you, halfway through this week, I had to change my prayer. When it got to 114, I had all the fire I wanted, amen? And so, going into it this week, I was like, Lord, I don't want no more fire, but what do you got for us? And isn't it unique how, I mean, I'm joking around with, but last week I knew there was a, the anointing of the Prince of God's fire. What I just kept getting in my spirit today was today was going to be a day. Another revival word is refreshing. And, and I tell you, aren't you ready to be refreshed? <laughs> After a week like last week, I mean, hey, if you were, lived in South Arkansas last week, you didn't have a good enough air conditioner. I don't care how big of a unit you had outside. It just was hot. But I love that God don't just try to ignite us, but he also refreshes us. And during the early service, that's just what I kept seeing in the spirit this morning. And I'm not going to get it, but it, I just, Pastor, I just kept seeing a refreshing and abundance of rain. And you'll hear Pastor teach today. And of course, my gave me that. But you know what I learned about? Maybe I'm the only learning impaired person in this building. But how many of you guys have ever been to a uh, public restroom? And, you know, you do whatever you do in there, and then you walk over to the sink like you're supposed to, all right? People are supposed to wash their hands after you go to the restroom, all right? I just uh, I reaffirm, but you ever walked out? I, I may be the only one that does, but I'll walk up to the sink. I'll do this number right here, and it won't come on. I'll step back. I'll walk over to this sink. I'll do this number right here, and that one will come on. <laughs> Have you all seen that? And then I would try to jump over here and catch this water, and then that one would come on. And I didn't get the concept of motion detection for a long time. I kept thinking that these sinks were waiting for me to make a motion, and that's what activates it. But then there's a, another point that I'm just going to be honest with you, and real, I learned this year that after I make a motion, I have to then present myself in the posture to receive. Because... You can make all the motion, and I did it. I jumped from sink to sink to sink, waving, 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 waving. And I wasn't getting what other people seem to be getting because the way they set those sinks to work is they pick up your motion, then there's a delay for you to position yourself to receive. And I believe the Lord today definitely has something for you to receive. But I would hate to jump to the receiving part because just like if all you do is just come and make a lot of motion and walk away you can walk away empty handed today you can also just walk up to receive and don't put any motion into it and you're not going to get anything out either does that make sense am I um, I'm being real <laughs> maybe too uh, uh, janitorial this morning All right, but I know there are some people that need to desperately receive but you know God has it and you desperately need refreshed and you got up and went through all the motions to get here but since you've been here the enemy's been trying to use the temperature he's been trying to use the attitude he's been trying to use the atmosphere to let you just sit back and not prepare to receive and that's the motion so I want to take just a second with just another three minutes because I don't want a single person walk out of here not getting refreshed what I believe the Lord way the Lord wants it to be so maybe you've been into this service for the last 28 minutes and you've been here you're present but you hadn't put any motion into it I want to give you three minutes to activate what God has in store for you is that all right does that make sense so that's why I want to pull you back up out of your seat let me tell you, because you got to understand, man, the things that God has for you far exceed. I was talking to Miss Beverly this morning. I told her when you start talking medical numbers to me, you might as well be speaking Greek. I don't have any idea what you're saying. But she was telling me a testimony about how last week her numbers in her kidneys 
we're one point away from tragedy is what it is dialysis and if God didn't activate something this week then she would have been on the trail to there but God activated and her points began to work the other way I mean I'm telling you doctors can't do that kind of stuff their plan was dialysis but see, God has something that you can receive that's bigger than what I'm telling you, than you can expect. I, I'm wearing my shirt today. Did you see it? <laughs> this shirt, this gentleman here has a company. It's called Time to Eat. And I purposely wore it today because, you know, it, time to eat basically means you need to come hungry. And if you come hungry, God always feeds and it says, and they were full, so they were completely filled or satisfied. So I believe that's what we're in the middle of. But again, you have to activate and then receive. So let's take three minutes. Activate it. And then over the next hour or so, you're going to receive. And I believe it's a refreshing that you can't even, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Or has he been entered into the thought? Or you haven't even imagined how good God can do this thing for you. So I don't want anybody to walk out of here missing it. So three minutes. Then Pastor Maurice is going to come up and introduce our speaker. But three minutes. This is your chance. Man, I don't know if you can. If your activation is done by you waving your hands. You stomping your feet. And this morning I was over. And every song, even the slow ones, I just felt a clap. Because see, the Bible says, praise the Lord, the clap. That, that's symbolic of something. Clap means it's settled. Every time the, the word, there was a word in this song that I needed God to do my, I would, it's like a judge, you know, when he says, all right, the final will be $500, boom. That sound represents its seal. And that's what a clap is. When you're worshiping the Lord and you're praising the Lord and you say, my God is big enough, and you put a seal to that mark, man, you are, you are setting into activation to receive what God has for us. So this is, you say, well, Cricket, I don't know how. Man, if you just got to clap all the way through the song, get the act, get the motion activated. If you can raise, stomp, sing, but don't walk out of here without receiving because last week was on fire. But this week, somebody needs to be refreshed. And God has what you need. You just need to take the step to receive. Amen? So praise team, take it. And Pastor Maurice is going to come up and introduce. Let's go. Come and consume me, my heart is ready, God if I burn, I burn for you, without hesitation, no reservation, God if I burn, I burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I'm gonna burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I'm gonna burn for you. Fresh fire, give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I'm gonna burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. 
fresh, fresh fire. What you desire, I wanna burn for you. Be a fresh, fresh fire. Be a fresh, fresh fire. What you desire. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fresh, fresh fire. Amen. As they were singing, I thought about the flame that comes from fire. And moth is attracted to fire. But to get warm, you're going to have to get closer to the fire. Amen. Because the Bible says God is a fire that strikes down like a hammer. Amen, and I thank God for that. I thank God for our pastor, Pastor Cricket, and we thank God for the man of God, the woman of God, and the son of God. Amen. Amen, Amen. and as Pastor Cricket was teaching, uh, my wife and I told her we need to pray. I see some spirits that we need to pray against, and then as he began to speak, the Lord gave her the word, humble yourself. We're breaking the spirit of pride. Under the mighty hand of God. Amen. Amen. And, and the Bible says he will exalt you in due time. Amen. Casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Amen. And so we want to get in the fire and we want to get closer. We want to get rid of self that we are here from heaven. Amen. 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 So say, Lord, Lord help, me help me to receive, to receive the, man the man of God. Lord, let this revival began in me. Amen. I'm, in, I'm here to introduce the man of God because you know I can go on forever, but I don't want to get in trouble. Amen. <laughs> uh, and his name is Pastor Jerry Porter. Amen. Senior. Amen. My son don't like to be called junior either, but we call him number two. Amen. I believe that he is a man of God. Amen. I believe because the, the fruit don't fall far from the tree. And, and we've been listening to his son for a while. Amen. And then we heard from mom last night that said, watch your mouth. And I shared with him that the Lord had told us to denounce what you have said, what you've been saying, that your latter days might be greater than your former. Amen. And I watched him last night as he kept opening the door for her. Amen. After 34 years of marriage, we teach marriage class. Some people can't do it after six months. Amen. <laughs> and, and they still opening the door. She needs something to drink. He's still getting it up. I believe that's a man of God. Amen. Because as the priest of the house, we have to exemplify what the man of God is. Amen. And so I just believe that he will come to you with fire from heaven today. Amen. And I know he will give us the word of life. Amen. So I pre prepare your hearts to receive none other than the Apostle Jerry Porter. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands? I just thank God so much for his presence right now. I really appreciate his presence. Just lift your hands. We bless you, Father. You're so awesome. You're so awesome, Lord. In this place, we honor you. We thank you so much for your goodness and your love and kindness. We honor you, Father. For you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Father, we just thank you today, Lord. We really thank you, Lord. From the depths of our hearts, from the depths of our soul, we magnify you. There is none like you, for you are in a class all by yourself. We thank you for today, God. We love you today. Thank you for your people. Thank you for this pastor. Thank you so much, Lord God, for his family. Thank you, God, for this loving church. Father, we just bless you and we thank you, Lord God, that your grace and your favor is upon it. And I just ask you to continue, Lord God, what you have started in this work. For you are a great God. You are a loving God. We appreciate you, God. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, we just love you today, God. You're so awesome. He is. He's so awesome, y'all. He's so awesome. Amen. We bless and honor the Lord for privileging and blessing us 
uh, to be back in the house of the Lord once again. We truly uh, are enjoying ourselves. It's continuing. It's yet going on. It haven't ceased. We just love your presence. My wife and I, amen, is just captured by the love that oozes from each of you. Each one of you just have such a loving spirit. And, and I, we, 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 it, we, we, I, I want to take it back. I'm just telling you right now, I want to take it back. I was uh, telling my wife, I was sitting, went to sit in the back just for a few minutes. And hear me good. Now, Pastor Cricket, I ain't, I, I know you as Jonathan, and I'm, I'm, I'm having to get used to Cricket. But uh, I want you to hear me real good. I love your people so much. I love this house. I love this uh, atmosphere. I appreciate it so much. I told my wife, I said, what I want to do, and I want all y'all to hear me. I said, what I want to do is have you to come and be a blessing to the house. We'll, we'll make that arrangement. But in your coming, I want these people to come with you. I do. Praise team, you cannot be left behind. You cannot. You, 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 you can't be left behind. You got to bring your instruments, whatever you got to have to do what you do. You got to come with them. And what I said that I was going to do when we do make this arrangement, we were going to uh, purchase a bus on our end and y'all just travel, okay? Y'all won't have to, y'all won't have to, y'all won't have to drive your own vehicles or nothing like that. Uh, I just love y'all that much, amen? And, and it's just a loving atmosphere, and I, I love good fellowship, and I love genuine fellowship. I love people that I believe that is uh, about the things of God. So uh, would, would y'all just consider that once it's proposed? We, I, we really would be glad. I, I, I met Brother Wade and his wife last night. Y'all might want to drive that new car y'all about, about to get, you know. <laughs> But amen. I thank God so much for everybody today. Thank God for Pastor Creek. Can y'all give God a hand clap for your man of God? Indeed. 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 I thank God, amen, for my wife tonight who has just been a blessing in my life. Uh, I, I, I don't know how many of you all were here and maybe you perhaps caught it online. But that lady dropped a word up in here last night. She really did. She dropped a word in here last night, and it was just so life-giving. I, I went home talking about it and telling her it wasn't just them that was affected by uh, what was said. I was affected by that word as well, and uh, I, I, I'm just glad. Ain't you glad God is in a class all by himself? He's in a class all by himself. Amen. Uh, my wife gave her, uh, I, I, he always looked like he talk to her more than me sometimes, but uh, she told me uh, about a week or so ago now that God spoke to her and told her that stop trying to, how you put that, stop trying to be like me and just live for me. Because you'll never be like me because I'm perfect. And always remember, you are forgiven. I said, I will forever hold on to that. He's in a class all by himself. He makes no mistake. But none of us can say that. That's why we are forgiven and he's perfect. Amen? Amen. Now listen, you all have uh, experienced the all and the anointing that's upon Jerry Jr.'s life. Amen. And, uh, I enjoy just as much as you do. I, 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 he, he, he stay busy at the house of God where we are. I keep him busy. Amen. Because uh, just a life-changing word that's in his mouth. But I, I said, now, I ain't finna go to Victor and try to be like him. <laughs> for, for one, he's younger than I am. <laughs> he's younger than I am. Lord's will, next month I'll be 61, and he just, what, turned 30, what, 4? 33. So we know that ain't finna be like that. So all I can do is just be me, all right? I just want to be me. 
I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know, I'm, I ain't no pressure here. I'm taking all of that off. <laughs> Amen. I ain't trying to be like Jerry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, I broke my prescription lenses a couple of weeks ago. Still hadn't gotten them. So I can't see y'all. <laughs> I promise you I can't. I, uh, all I can do is just know it's people here, there. I, I see the, the shapes or whatever, but I can't tell your face unless I get close up on you. And you in the dark, you know I can't see you. <laughs> but the word that God has put in my heart tonight uh, is very much revival related. It's very, very much revival related. I talked a few moments this morning about being on the other side of the flood with Noah coming out of the ark. And some things that were shared there that I perhaps would try to pair with what's being stated in this service in that Noah built that ark on a level plane. But the floods, the flood that came caused it to rise. Floods don't come to kill you. Not when you're serving God. They come to elevate you. Those floods come to elevate you. And the scripture said that when the storm was over, and when God called them out of the ark, the ark was sitting upon a mountain. From a valley to a mountain. Storms don't leave you in the same place. They always are designed to elevate us. Always. Well, when God put this word here in my spirit, I said, God, I ain't talked about this in a long time. I ain't talked about it in a long, long time. But I believe that the relevance of it is for many of us that are in here today. Now, I want you to kind of just bear with me here because at some point and at some time in our walk with God, we all have been here. If, if you're not in this place today, in your walk, you will eventually come there. Because it is a time that you don't always feel like doing the same thing today. Sometimes you need God to really come and uh, motivate you. You need God to come and strengthen you. You need God to encourage you. Because sometimes life has a way of just uh, draining you. It has a way of just... It's so taxating with the things that are putting upon, put upon us and we are burdened in a lot of instances. But I'm so glad that the Lord God that we serve, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, this word that I have been given to share with you, uh, Cricket said he needed about an hour. I don't know if he's going to get that long out of me, but I'm just going to, Give you what I got and going back to that seat over there. <laughs> because I've been doing it long enough now that it's not about impressing as much as it is pleasing. It's not about impressing me. I impress here, but I please in that direction. So with that being stated, if you would get your Bibles or if the photos stood on the screen, this word, these here are some dollars, some, 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 some glasses that came from Walmart. These are not what I need. I'm telling you, I'm still about to kiss the page. <laughs> Trying to see it, I'm telling you. But in Matthew chapter 18, chapter 8 and verse 14. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 14. It says... And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her and the fever left her 
and she arose and ministered unto them. And when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with this word and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Can you look at your neighbor and just tell your neighbor, God's going to break your fever. Tell somebody else, God's going to break your fever. Father, I thank you for your word. Be glorified. Be exalted as we humble ourselves before you to speak your word, Lord God. I ask you in Jesus' name, not let one of us leave the same way that we came. I pray, God, that this word would resonate and find a resident in our hearts that we would please you. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, let it rest in the holy and precious name of Jesus do we pray. Amen and amen. The scripture says, and when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid. She was in a condition that required her to lie down. The position that she was in was what, wasn't what she was always used to. She wasn't acclimated. To being in that position but circumstances have come and there she is the scripture says laid there with a fever the fever the fever was listen at this to the best of her ability the fever itself that she occurred that occurred in her body was really her body acting normally when such things take place in the body. It was an instance where the defense mechanism of the body had went active because now it was having to resist that thing that had penetrated some type of bacteria perhaps that had penetrated that caused the fever to come about. And the reason that the temperature in her body was had risen was to ward off that thing that was dwelling on the inside of her because God is in his wisdom has created and made the body in such a way that it has its own defense mechanism but sometimes there are situations that goes beyond what had occurred in her body that require a greater power new strength, new uh, 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 strength that came from uh, another source that was stronger than it because it was overtaking her. And there were signs, there were signs that, that goes with the fever that each of us uh, ought to be mindful of because what happens naturally, it also happens spiritually. The fever that she was dealing with the Lord began to make me see many of my people are serving me with a fever. They have a fever. And you can tell when they have a fever. Because how many know God don't want nobody to pump and to prime to get a praise out of them? But the Lord desires a, a hand to be lifted up willingly. He loved for somebody to just bless him because they know who he is. They love him for who he is. He don't want no makeshift. He don't want no mechanical praise. But he wants something that comes from the heart. Blessing me for who I am. Blessing me for who I am. And this Bible declared, amen, that she lied there with the fever. She was there in a condition that she wasn't normally used to. Which caused her not to do what she normally do. And the scripture declared, amen, that this woman that, uh, that, that, that was in Peter's house by way of Jesus' visitation, amen, took note of what was going on in Peter's house. You got to hear this. This was happening in Peter's house. Peter wasn't sick, but it was somebody there, somebody there that was. And I'm so thankful to God. That he knows what every one of our houses need today. 
The fever that's in your house. The fever that's in her house. Amen. He knows exactly who it is that needs what needs to be done. And the Bible declared, amen, that this woman called with this fever. She again uh, lying there. Uh, her body doing normally what it should do when something like this has happened. And you could tell that the fever had set in. And in the book of Luke, it said that it was a severe fever that hit. This wasn't just one that was one or two degrees above uh, the normal temp. But this one was an elevated. It was a severe uh, case that had taken upon this, 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 this mother here. And the Bible declared that Jesus broke that fever. But, what, but, but before I, we, we get the fever broken, we need to know what it looks like when the fever has set in. On the people of God, people of God, amen, when we say we love God with our mouth, but the fever has set in that in our hearts it's contrary. The Bible declares, amen, that, that, that this woman here, she, she, she had signs, she had symptoms that goes with her condition. I want you to know a healthy saint don't have to be pumped and primed, but you could find a saint that was once on fire for God. That is now lethargic. They come into church and you have to all but uh, just, just, just put a demand over them to do the things that they ought to do for God. But God ain't mad about that. Because in truth, in reality, it's just life has happened. And life happens to us all. All of us have life to, life to happen to us. That will cause sometimes you, amen, to be gripped, so to speak, by a spiritual fever. You don't have the appetite that you used to. You would rather have gun smoke more so than you would rather have the word of the Lord. You would rather have the, your senses to be appetized by all of these other different things wherein that it used to be the word of the Lord. I know I'm right. Amen. That there were times I could spend hours in the word of God and never get tired. But now I can't hardly read a verse before I'm asleep. I, I want to get quiet right there. I wanted to get quiet right there. Because sometimes you can read that Bible and that thing become like the yellow pages used to be. You didn't know who, uh, what you were reading. But, 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 but when you really have an appetite, when you really have an appetite, or rather when you have lost your appetite, you don't have no desire for the things of God. That's when you know that you're in need of a revival. And let me tell you something. Don't, 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 don't sit in the midst and need revival and don't ask for God to revive you. Don't play church and act like you got it all together when you know you don't have it all. I need God. When you need God, mama can't help you. Daddy can't help you. Sister can't help you. You have to go to the one that can help you. Because if you don't find help, you'll find yourself doing stuff that you, really, you thought that you were over with. Uh -huh, I know I'm right. I know I'm right. When you find yourself not indulging in the things of God, you'll find yourself just doing stuff that you normally wouldn't do when you don't have an adequate amount of that which is needed to resist, amen, what the enemy does, what the enemy brings your way. Amen. You got to have something that can ward it off. I know that I ain't the only one up in here that ain't felt like cussing. And can I be truthful with you? A, a couple of them didn't slip. <laughs> but they came out. And I say, God, I thought I was over that stuff. I thought those words had left my vocabulary. But the God that I serve will let me know that you don't never make it on your own. You can't keep yourself. You'll say stuff that if God don't keep you, you'll say some stuff, you'll do some stuff, you feet or go some places that you thought that you had lost direction to. But he said, I just need you, Jerry, to be honest before me. Stop trying. Stop trying to do something to, that, that's very titillating to the emotions of me and do what it is needed to just please me son when you make a mistake be glad to just say lord i'm sorry i don't want to be in pretension be, be pretentious with god i need god 
that when I know I need him, when I see myself in the mirror and it don't look like this mirror, I need to ask God, help me, God. Help me, Lord. Because if you don't help me, God, I know that I can't do this here in myself. I can't keep myself. I don't care how long I've been preaching. I don't care how long I've been saved. It's not a day that I can still do it without him. And neither could you. And he said to me that, Jerry, a lot of times I can tell when you have a fever. Amen. When you yourself haven't been able to diagnose it. Amen. I got read, I got I got ways to tell whether or not you really, amen, is healthy, you're sick, or you need me to come to your rescue. Because let me tell you something about God. When you get in a situation that you have a fever and you know that you can't help your yourself ain't you glad God will come to where you are he, he, he won't leave you like that he won't he won't let you stay like that because deep down inside he know you got a heart for him he know you love him it don't mean that just because amen that kind of stuff happened whatever that may be that you don't love him amen but the fever had set in so God began to speak to me and he began to say, son, many of my people have a fever and you can see it. It'll show up in their desire for the word of the Lord. You'll see it show up when praise and worship. One time, at one point, right before I went in the back and the praise and worship had begun, I saw many of you, you all had gathered right here, standing before seemingly the throne of God, worshiping him. I say, God, that's what we need. Everywhere we go, it need to be a people that ain't ashamed to lift up your name. They ought not be ashamed to praise you for who you are. But when you got a fever, when you have a fever, ain't nothing can help you. Ain't nothing can bring you out of that thing when you got a fever. God has to come and do something with you well listen y'all because i have had a fever amen and some of you may have a fever now because my fever has been broken i came here to tell somebody that yours can be broken too i don't know where your fever is i don't know what it causes amen what it looked like with you but i come here to de declare to you today people of god that your fever is getting ready to be broken you ain't going out of here the same way. You, your fever getting ready to be broken. Amen. Because you, you can tell. I'm almost through, prophet. Man of God, I'm almost through. I want you to know that saints of God, when you got a fever, amen, again, don't act like you don't need the doctor, amen, to try to cure yourself. You know how we like to try to treat ourselves, amen, when we got a uh, condition that's going on in our body. And what we need, amen, to do is to go, amen, to our doctors, amen, because they have a stronger prescription than an over-the-counter medicine can do. We are going to get an over-the-counter medicine and don't get no better, but yet you still want to try to treat yourself. But I'm so thankful to God that when I come to the house of God, he got a cure, he got a prescription for me that you can't find at the local drugstore. Amen, because I can go to him. Come on, look at somebody and tell them God going to break that fever. Tell somebody again, God going to break that fever. You ain't got time to be sitting around. Man, it's getting late. It's getting late in the hour. It's getting late in the hour. You see people that were once close to God drifting away from God. Amen. I heard Brother Marie say, getting away from the fire. Amen. And you wonder why you cold. And, and, you, and you know when you got a fever, you, have, you start looking at folk funny. You, you, you start looking at people funny. You start looking at them, amen, with another eye. Who does she think she is? You weren't saying that when you didn't have the fever. You only saying that because you got a fever, amen, because once God break the fever off of you, you're going to be doing what they're doing. I promise, man of God, I'm almost due. He said, he said in that eighth chapter, he said, Listen at this. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his mother's wife. And she was sick of a fever. And the Bible said, and he touched her. He touched her hand. He touched her hand. And the Bible declares, and the fever left her. The fever left her after he touched her. The fever would have yet been holding on had not he touched her. 
but because he touched her, the fever had to leave. I'm here to tell you that a fever in Jesus can't live in the same place. I said again, a fever and Jesus cannot live in the same place. If a fever is there, it's a good sign that Jesus has been dwindling in your life. But I come here to tell you that the fever is leaving you this day. Somebody say this day. I'm talking about, I'm talking about what it's going to look like when the fever is off of me. Hey Amen. I told you. Now, I don't act like Brother Jay, Jerry Jr. And I don't act like Sister Julia. But I'm here to tell you, I love what God does in my life. And I'm not one that's easily to keep still, amen, when I'm declaring the word. And I'm telling you right now, Victory, you ain't going to be the first one that I'm going to be cool with. No, I'm going to be just who I am. I love my God. I love him. I love him so much. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I get ecstatic. I get excited about God in my life because you weren't there. You weren't there. You weren't there. You ain't hearing me. You weren't there when I had a fever in my house. You weren't there when I had a fever in my marriage. You weren't there when I had a fever on my finances but God can somebody say but God see bro Wade I like to be real with church folk because sometimes church folk got a way of just making you think they don't have no problems they make you think they don't go through nothing but I'm telling you right now amen that you gonna get it in your spirit today hallelujah you gonna get it in your spirit today that I'm calling for help hallelujah I'm calling 911 you can look at me funny you can act at me you can think I'm something and you can say what you want to when I know I need help I'm telling you I'm gonna cry out for help because that revival hallelujah listen to this just like you can tell when I was sick you also going to tell when I done got well Woo! Lord have mercy Oh, I feel like dancing right there. I said, I'm going to let you know when I done got well. If you was able to tell when I was sick, um, mm, you ain't finna make me act like I'm still sick. I'm here to tell you that I've been healed. I've been delivered. I've been, the chains has been broken. Hallelujah. I got my hallelujah back. I got my prayer life back. I got my glory to God back. Can you tell somebody I got it back? I need you to say it like you really mean to tell somebody I got it back. I got it back. I got it back. I got it back. I lost it at one time, but I got it back. Hallelujah. I got my praise back to God. I, I got my giving back. I got it back in order. Oh, I felt like I felt that one. I felt that one. Glory to God. Because y'all weren't there. Y'all weren't there. Y'all weren't there. You don't know some of the nights that I had to stay up late and didn't have nobody to communicate. Didn't even seem like I had God. He wasn't even seeming like he was answering me. Y'all can act like y'all ain't been there if you want to. Hey Amen. You done been in that place where God wasn't saying nothing. He was quiet. Hey Amen. He was just doing what it's. Lord have mercy. I'm still crying. I'm still weeping. Hallelujah. Because things just ain't working out like it was. I want it like I wanted to. But I'm so glad that God came to Peter's house. Well, I'm here to tell you he came to Jerry's house. He came to... Listen, 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 Woo! glory to God, yeah Lord, yeah Lord, yeah Lord, yeah Lord, Jerry Jr., I know you may be watching this at some point in time, but I want to say to you that you was one of the ones that had me to have a fever. Yeah. Jerry Jr. caused us to have some fever. Am I right about it, boy? He caused us to have some fevers. Amen. I ain't say one fever, but we had some fevers. <laughs> hallelujah. But hallelujah. Ain't you glad that God still break fevers? Well, Jerry Jr. is the result of a broken fever. He's the result of a broken fever. Because if God had not broken the fever off of his life, we don't know. We just don't know. We just don't know. Don't know where he would be. And if I may but tell you here today, that saints of God, don't be quiet when he have broken your fever. I'll say it again. 
Don't sit around here and be quiet with you and God done broke your fever. You know why? Because somebody else sick too. Somebody else sick too. So you, you, you better hear me real good. I, I ain't worried about church people. I, I'm, I, I told y'all to learn how to get over all that. All these sanctimonious looks. I, I, know, I know all about it. Hallelujah. We know how to act. We know how to act like we got it together up in here. But Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Who said that? Help me please. <laughs> I want you to get it. Because somebody else need a deliverance. Somebody else need help. I don't know what it is that my neighbor is in need of. What she may be dealing with may be flu-like system, but I have symptoms. But I want to say to you that if he broke my fever, he also can heal you of whatever you've been dealing with. Yes, Lord. How many want your prayer life back? Don't, 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 don't pity pat if you If you really want your prayer life back, I want my time with God. Well, I was all right with just me and God. Didn't have to worry about who else was, what I had to do next. I'm so caught up with you, Lord. So glad time getting by. I heard my wife say a many times a long time ago. She said, time in God's presence is never wasted. You don't never waste time in God's presence. And the devil trying to rush us out of here. You know how it is. That's why you, <laughs> I promise, I know I've hurt people's heart. Uh -uh, I ain't, you ain't going to blame it on Jerry Sr. that you stayed in here too long. It won't be Jerry Jr. that did it. If you stay up in here, Holy Spirit kept you. Because I want you to know God just want to break your feet. He's trying to give you a revival. You need your revival to get up and start doing. The Bible declared that when Peter's wife was healed, the scripture says she changed positions. Y'all ain't hearing me. She changed her posture. Look at somebody and tell them, change your posture. Let me tell you something. When you change your posture, it's going to tell. It's going to tell. She went from laying down to standing up. I'm here to tell you my posture has changed. Woo! If you just saw me just a little while ago, you wouldn't say that's the same man. But I'm the same man, but just got a different posture. What cricket is? Y'all think I'm playing? Come on, let's stand to your feet up in here. He loved to see you with your head down, head hung low. Finances got a fever, children got a fever, job got a fever, vehicles got a fever. Just a fever all the way around, fever everywhere you look. But the God that we serve, I say it again, the God that we serve, he still breaks fevers. Tell somebody he still break fever. I'm so glad that my fever being broken didn't matter whether anybody wanted to see it broken or not. They, some people are glad to see you down. It's pitiful, it's sad, but they love to see you down. But I'm so glad that God is one that picks us up again. Yes. Lift your hands. Because the Lord himself in this season and at this particular time is breaking the fever of the hearts, the lives of his people. He know you can't do what you have to do for him in that condition. But the trouble is that when you have that condition, you won't cry out for help. I'm too, I'm too macho for that. I have too much ladylikeness in me to behave like that. But people of God, when you need help, when you need help, when you need help, 
He's right there, y'all. Y'all hear this here real good. He's right there. He's right there. I talked last week in the service at the church. I talked about how Jesus and Peter were on the water. And the Bible said that he started to look at those surging waves that was over his head. And the Bible declared he began to sink. And when he began to sink, when he began to sink, the Bible said, he cried out. Nope. That wasn't no time to be quiet, right? That wasn't no time to be talking about shh, 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 shh. Hush. No, 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 no. When you need help, you got to not be ashamed to cry for help. Marriages need help. Children and family needs help. Finances are collapsing right in your possession. They're dwindling. But all you had to do was cry out for help. And what I found out about the story that was so beautiful unto me was the fact that Jesus was right there in arm's length to pull him up out of it. He ain't that far. Can you tell somebody he's not that far from you? He's not that far from you. The scripture said he reached out and touched him. Hallelujah. Let me tell you how good God is. That even though this same man that walked out to Jesus on the water, the Bible said that when he looked up and began to sing to see the waves, he began to sink and he cried out for help. But you know what the beauty about it was? That at the point where Jesus raised him back up again, you don't read where Jesus toted him back to the boat. But the Bible declared they both walked right back. When God, when God, y'all got to hear it, y'all. When God fixed something, he fixed it right. He'll make it like it's never happened. Make it like it's never been broken. That's what I love about the God of our salvation. He'll make it like it's never happened, like it's never been broken. Yes. You owe it to him that if you have a fever, don't you sit idly by and not cry for help when you know you need help. Every child of God has had a fever at some point in time something that they couldn't fix on their own and we all have tried that over-the-counter method to try to cure it but you know what jesus will walk right past you why are you trying to fix it and go to somebody that really needs to help come on lift your hands in here come on just say lord break my fever come on tell somebody God's going to break your fever. If you desire prayer, let me say this here about this whole house, this entire house. I was here yesterday while my wife was ministering. And while she was ministering, the Lord began to minister to me about this house. And I even feel it even the more. That there is a pain that is in this house. That is going to require God to heal. This house needs a healing. It needs a healing because of the brokenness. Because of some things that, that has happened. Both collectively, collectively and individually. And I want to let you know that God has come here today. That this house going to be made whole. This house is going to be made whole. Yes, Lord. I hear the Lord saying, I hear the Lord saying, you're going to have to be made strong. You know why y'all got to be made strong? Y'all got to be made strong for the weak that are coming. There are some weak ones that's coming that's going to need you to be strong. And in order for you to be made strong, in order for you to help those that are weak, 
It's going to cause you to be made strong so, so much to the point that you ain't even obvious of your own pain because you're too concentrated on somebody else's. Come on, lift your hand. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Yes, Lord. Lift your hands. I was driving through to this place and while driving, I don't know where exactly where I was, but the Lord spoke to me. And I ain't much tell pastor about it. He told me, he started saying some stuff that only God had to let me know it, that he was already working in that field. But as a sign, listen to me, as a sign to this house, as a sign to this house, I saw God bringing in officers. I'm talking about as members. I saw some that had political clout that's going to become a part of this house. It's not, listen, it's not that you are not, that you are any better. It's just that those that's coming need help. And he's sending them to a place that they could get help. Thank you, Lord. Praise team, you're more than just a praise team. Please hear me. You're more than just ones that conduct stuff in here uh, while service is going on. You have purpose on your life. I told you how much your, your voice blessed me. But man of God, you are really a chosen vessel. You are a chosen vessel. I even hear the Lord say to tell you that the attacks upon you on a personal level. He say, think it not strange. Because what's been taking place in your life is all for purpose. If you all were entertainers, it'll be one thing, but you're not entertainers. That's right. You're worshipers. Worshippers. Yes. You're worshipers. You turn people's faces yes. to God. Come on, just lift your hands. I feel Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I don't know who you are. But if you need God to break your fever, I want to pray for you. Please don't come if you don't need it. But if you need God to help you to break that fever off of you, to lose the over-the-counter method, please, I pray for you. I pray for you. If that be a one, if that be a one, thank you, Lord. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. I sense God. I sense God. I sense His presence. I sense His presence. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. This fever is getting ready to roll. You come here, daughter. you listen to me some of you here you don't even much need me to lay, to lay hands on you because there is there is something that is resonating there is something being dropped into our midst right now that's bringing about restoration it's restoration taking place even right now y'all hear me restoration is taking place right now Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, lift your hands in here. Daughter, I saw you in the first service. First time meeting you, my God. But I want to encourage your heart that some of the things that you have dealt with, some of the things that you have already experienced, God himself ain't going to leave you like this because you got a calling on your life. You got a calling on your life. Hallelujah. The oil, the oil that flows from you. God said, I'm having to let some stuff happen to cause the release. Some of the pain, 
Some of the pain you've had to experience as a young lady, you really shouldn't have had to deal with some of this stuff. But God would say to you, but God will say to you, you're getting ready to see that he's getting ready to give you beauty for your ashes. Some of the pain that you have experienced, yes, it's getting ready to work for your good. It's getting ready to work for your good. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes, 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 yes. I hear God. I hear God saying this to you, my daughter. I would hear, hear God saying this. That in as much as you already are a dreamer, God said he's fixing to intensify your dreams. Your dreams are fixing to intensify. It's the direction that you go. From here, you get ready to go up. This is your time and this is your season. If ever, if ever, I know I was sent to this house, I was sent here to, to preach this word to you because your feet are getting ready to be broken hallelujah god is getting ready to break that fever off of your life and off of your ministry hallelujah your ministry as well come on lift your hands in here saints yes lord yes god yes god yes god yes 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 yes, yes. wanted this to be a word of a witness to you and to this house yes, yes. sir I didn't meet you no sooner than yesterday as far as I know was the first time that I saw you but if ever I'm looking at a soul winner yes, yes, yes. that's gonna be one of the biggest soul winners for this ministry God, right there God. even this day even this day God is placing upon you an anointing that's going to draw. It's going to draw. My mind said to my, you be encouraged, sir. Because what's getting ready to happen in your life? I hear the Lord saying, a turnaround. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. man y'all talking about a man that's getting ready to fall in thank love you, with Jesus. God thank you Jesus all over again hallelujah thank you Lord you ain't seen it yet brother you ain't seen what's getting ready to happen in your life I'm seeing people coming to you man my God even God is an, God is endowing you with the wisdom it's a wisdom that God has given you that gonna help people in some dire situations they come into you brother yes Lord 
Yes, Lord. Get up. Some of the pain that you have experienced, God been to utilize that pain, my brother. My not not my son. You watch it. You watch it. The better days of your life truly is in here ahead of you, Hallelujah. and it's not behind you. I even hear the Lord say to tell you that you ain't missed your time. The enemy wants you to feel like you done missed your opportunity. But God say, not so. Not so. I hear, him, I hear God saying, I'm going to redeem the time. Thank you, Jesus. On your behalf. Come on, lift your hands in here. Oh, I feel God in here. But there's a presence. There is a presence. There is a presence. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's a supernatural grace. That's going to rest on this house as well. Where it's going to be a lot of entrepreneurs. Yes, God. There's an Ooh. entrepreneur leadership and anointing yes. that's up on this house. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somewhere in that declaration, my brother, when you were reading it, it looked like I saw something about witty ideas. Yes. God is fixing to bless this people. Yes, Lord. I hear God saying this. I hear God saying this. I promise I'm going to sit down. Because I promise you, that it's a revival happening in here. Right now. Right now. It's a revival that's happening right now in this house. Lord, I thank you right now. Listen. Hear this. God will not bless you with a business that came from his, his hand. And you don't have clientele. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. It must come. Yes, it must Lord. Come. God is getting ready to bless this house like it's never been blessed before by our son. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are welcome. Yeah. It ain't over. Y'all better hear me. It's not over. 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 You you surely ain't going back the same way that you came. Not you. You're not going back the same way that you came. I feel God been tugging at you like this. I feel God been doing this to you. And there's been instances in the pool, you've been kind of trying to not let it happen. But this day, said the Lord, your fever is being broken. Your time and your season. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's all over you. It's all over you, my sister. Of what God is getting ready to do in your life. Yeah. You mark my word. I don't know if it has happened or it's getting ready to happen. I don't know which one it is. But I hear the Lord saying, you're going to have one of the greatest testimonies in this house. You're going to have a testimony and everybody going to know the Lord did it. The Lord did it. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. And listen to me. It ain't going to stop with you, but it's coming to your whole house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's coming to your whole house. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. You, you, you remember here? You ain't seen what God getting ready to do in your house. It's coming to your house. Just like Jesus went to Peter's house. Just like Jesus went to Peter's house. It's getting ready to come to your house. Salvation coming to your house salvation coming to your house. Come on, lift your hands and give him praise up in here. What my heart longs for to be overcome. Now I want to pray. I want to pray a mass prayer right now. Lord, I thank you. Yes. You, my sister, I think that's a sister up there. You just taking the selfie. 
you, you. Can you hear me up there? Yes, you. Yes, you. You, you, you. I don't know who you are, but the Lord directed my attention to the balcony, and I saw you. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I hear the Lord saying to tell you the rain that's been falling on you is getting ready to cease. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord said to tell you that the sun is getting ready to break open for you like, like never before. I don't know who you are. I don't want to know whether you're young or old. I promise I can't see you. I just see a, a, the figure of a person. But I want to encourage you that God said that it's getting ready to be a breakthrough come to your Thank house. You, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You finna have a breakthrough. You fixing to have a breakthrough. Hey! You fixing to have a breakthrough. There's some the people getting ready to be happy with Thank you. you for the breakthrough. It ain't gonna be just you alone, but there's some people getting ready to be happy with you. Hallelujah. For what's getting ready to take place. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you for this entire house. Yes, Lord. I thank you for every soul that's represented here. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hand, sir? Thank you. My God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Your time, your seeds. You've been marked. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I sense God has called you sir a calling that has come upon your life yes lord i see where god pull and yet pulling you drawing you yes lord yes lord yes lord it's on you it's on you my god if i have i'm looking at somebody that you just saying god you like you're saying, God, use me, Lord. Use me, use me, use me, use me, use me, use me. Yes, Lord. Because there's some things that even have taken place in the past that you ain't even pleased about. But today, God even cleansing your conscience. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You be encouraged, my brother. You be encouraged. Because God's getting ready to answer that prayer. Man, God's getting ready to answer that prayer for you. You're getting ready to be used. You're getting ready to be used. And you, you, it's almost like you're saying, me, 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 Lord. Your past has nothing to do with what God has for you in your future. Julia. Oh, I got it here. Do this for me, boo. Call my number. This is for you, sir. This is just for you, okay? This is just for you. Dial this number real quick. I want you to see this. God, I thank you. This is your word, sir. This is your word. You ain't deleted me, have you? Okay. Try it again. It's working better. Oh, there you go. You hear that? This for you, sir. God told me like this. That Jerry, don't answer it. Because that's your past calling. And your past ain't got nothing new to say. Did you hear that? That's powerful. That's powerful. Hallelujah. It ain't got Hallelujah. nothing. Don't you answer your past. Hallelujah. Because it ain't got nothing new to say. Come on, come on. Can y'all lift y'all hands in here? Can y'all give God a hand clap of praise? Come on, Pastor. Come God bless you. Let's go to your seat, blessing the Lord. But my heart's long to be overcome by your presence, Holy Spirit. Just stay here and worship.
worship as long as you like. The rest of you were dismissed. Revival goes on next week on Saturday and on Sunday. The rest of you stay here and worship as long as you like.